Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna feature the ES290 biradial horn. This is a, as you can tell, a large horn. And so this test, I'm gonna be using the JBL 2446H compression driver, which uses a four inch titanium diaphragm. I've adapted it to the horn with a throat adapter. And you can see there on your screen, just in the top view, this is what the horn looks like in the top view. You got the ES curvature. And also I'll show you there, this is inspired by what you see there is the top view of the Yurichi A290. This is a classic biradial horn that inspired me to build this horn. So they share the same physical size. They, sh they share the same low frequency cutoff of 300 Hertz. However, that's pretty much where the similarities end. And so you can, I'll do a video montage after this video, just showing you some of the design elements of this horn. But for this video, what I'd like to do is do a full set of electrical and acoustical measurements. And also we've developed some carbon composite diaphragms for the JBL driver that we'll be testing. And I'll also be looking at adding some damping material into the rear chamber. I have some alpaca wool that I'll be testing. So let's get started. So. I'm just going to move over so I got some room for my, my graphs there. Okay, so starting with the impedance curve of the JBL driver, you can see there that we have the lowest frequency impedance peak is at 300 Hertz. And so then we have a series of other impedance spikes at 450 Hertz and also at 700 Hertz. Excuse the, the screaming, the kids are playing video games downstairs. So, um, You'll notice as well that there's breakup pretty early with this. Now this is typical for a four inch titanium diaphragm. So you'll see uh, breakup starting to occur as early as 12 kilohertz. Okay, so moving on to the frequency response. So for this test, uh, because this is a 300 hertz loading, we're now starting to have to factor in boundary loading in your listening room. Okay, so for this I've done two sets of measurements. So the first frequency response test is what's called 4pi, which is free space. The horn is positioned in free space and there's no early reflections within the test environment within two meters. And so the second test is called quarter pi, and that's actually putting the horn close to what would be your listening room. So you would have a rear wall within a one meter distance. You would have the floor boundary, which would be a meter away from the horn. And so the first test is the four pi open space and you can see the frequency response there. And so the next frequency response is gonna be what's the quarter pi. And you can see there that we get a little bit more boost in the lower mid range. So the horn achieves a 300 Hertz crossover point. And so I've overlaid the two measurements, the four pi and the quarter pi measurements. So you can see the added gain provided by the boundary loading in the room. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, moving on from frequency response, I've conducted distortion measurements. And so you can see there that we have good distortion, 0.1% uh, from one kilohertz up to 10 kilohertz. And so for this test, I decided just to move the microphone. All my measurements were conducted at a one meter mic distance. And so I decided just to move the microphone right up to the horn mouth. And so you can see there, this is actually the results that I got. And uh, we were getting down almost down to 0.01% distortion uh, through around the one kilohertz region. So I've, I've taken the same measurements and then just displayed them with the vertical scale showing instead of percent, it's showing it as a dB scale. And so you can see it there. And so the distortion, if you'll note that at one kilohertz, we're actually 68 dB down from the fundamental for the third harmonic. So these are extremely good results for distortion levels. Moving on to the off-axis colored polar map, you'll see there that I've done a full 90 degrees off-axis colored polar map for this horn. And so we're having a nice narrowing of the, of the coverage as you move into the upper treble. However, you can see there that it still, it still provides around an 80 degree 
horizontal listening window right out to 16 kilohertz. So this horn is actually providing wide treble coverage and which allows you to actually use it in a two-way configuration. So I've also just shown the off-axis polar map out to 60 degrees for reference since this is what's uh, most typical for uh, publications to show and also I've shown the same set of measurements but just with the frequency response overlay and so the red being on axis 15 is the green 30 degrees off axis is the blue and then 45 is the gray so you, it just simply shows that we are getting uh, good off axis behavior and there's no uh, significant anomalies off axis so moving on to one of the more important aspects well off axis is but the uh, burst decay which is a time domain measurement showing how quickly the the, the driver decays and so it's showing that through the lower mid-range into the mid-range we're getting very clean burst decay results however we are getting significant breakup past 10 kilohertz so this is I think well known with this compression driver but you'll note from the frequency response graphs that it does achieve very respectable output into say 16 17 kilohertz region so the the four inch titanium diaphragm does extend quite high into the upper treble and so when i'm listening to this i am actually hearing good uh, extension into the treble but the uh, treble isn't quite as clean uh, that i would that I, as what i would prefer so i've also shown the burst decay with a 35 dB scale just to lower the noise floor to show you again that the mid range is actually quite clean with this combination. So that's a segue, perfect segue into the next thing that I'd like to show you which is I put alpaca wool into the rear chamber which gently presses on the rear diaphragm. You'll know, from, you'll know that from my previous videos that I, I do like to experiment to see if there's ways to actually modify the driver itself to get better performance. And so what I'd like to show you is the uh, effects of adding the apaca wall. So you can see I've done an overlay of the frequency response and you can note that there isn't much change to the frequency response with the wool added to the rear chamber. And so also with the electrical impedance curve, you'll note that the blue is with the wool and the green is without. And you can actually note that there is a significant damping effect of the wool especially when you look at that resonant breakup mode uh, past 10 kilohertz you can see that it's it's helping deal with that a little bit and so doing a burst decay comparison you'll note that there is some improvement but it's not enough compared to other compression drivers that I've tested where they do exhibit very clean burst decay past 10 kilohertz what we're seeing here is something that definitely needs to be dealt with if you're just using the 2446H as a mid-range driver, then yes, it definitely provides excellent audiophile performance for that application. So the other thing I'd like to show in this video, which is quite interesting, a colleague of mine owns a manufacturing facility where he produces high-end sporting goods. He does wind surfboards uh, and it's world-class products. He's very uh, knowledgeable on carbon composite epoxy, high modulus designs. And so you see there, we've developed a prototype diaphragm that uses a high modulus epoxy. It's a sandwich of carbon fiber, foam, and then another layer of carbon fiber. And so what that's doing is it's creating a very high modulus structure. And so in this video, I'd like to show you the test results from that as well. So you can see the frequency response there, which is uh, quite good, quite smooth. Up until we see 10 kilohertz, we see a significant drop. And so that's something that I'll be looking at closer. And so you can see an overlay between the titanium diaphragm and the carbon composite diaphragm. And you can see that they're both very similar, except the titanium diaphragm has much uh, higher treble output. And I suspect that what we're seeing there in those resonant peaks in the titanium are resonances, which uh, is kind of cheating. But anyways, uh, burst decay results. You can see that the um, it's a little tricky to tell with the 
the carbon composite burst decay. I'll feature more detailed measurements in a future video, but for now it's looking like the carbon composite has better dampening characteristics for uh, the upper treble. So that's something that I'll be looking at really closely. And it does look like the mid-range and lower mid-range is, is even better behaved with the carbon composite. So that concludes my testing. Take care and have a great day.